Hello, everybody. Welcome to Boss Rush Gay Podcast or Boss Rush Podcast. I'm your host, Eddie V, looking dapper. <laughs> yes, it is great to be back. We have been off for two weeks, but I'm so excited to be back. Hopefully, everybody had a great Christmas, had a great New Year's birthday, whatever you celebrated um, before this lovely podcast has came back to give you guys great enjoyment but joining me is Wasman himself mr Corey derrick i'm here it is the new year the first show i'm excited i got my my fancy hoodie on that i've been wearing since christmas so it looks you know. comfy oh my gosh dude it's the most comfortable thing i've ever worn in my life <laughs> I, I think i've literally worn it every day except for like two days since i got it i have literally <laughs> washed it like twice a week Oh wow! It's just yeah. so comfortable, man. Ugh. Yes, and our special guest—he's the cast of hype, cast of hype. In case of you guys didn't catch that, the hype cast himself, Mr. Antonio Good. What up, Ed? What's up, Corey? Thank you very much for having me on. I am super pumped. That's Antonio here, aka Hypecaster. I'm ready to get naked, guys. I'm just ready to. I'm ready to pop it off. I want to apologize right now for my behavior, okay? Because you caught me on a day where I'm just, I, I'm bouncing off the walls here, okay? I'm ready to go. I'm gonna throw a stick of dynamite into this podcast. We're gonna blow it up, all right? I hope yes. that's okay. No, it's good. First show of the year. Right, we're gonna I'm blow sorry. it up. All right, cool. <laughs> Thank I mean, you for having me on for real. If it excites you, Antonio, I'm not wearing pants, so. Oh no, pants! I love it. <sighs> Yes, everybody. Um, our wise Wisconsinite tonight, Jesse Douglas, couldn't make it. He is resting, relaxing, and our streaming champion, as always, Mr. Ray Apollo, couldn't make it either. He is out of town, enjoying it. Both of them are getting rest and relaxing. So hopefully, we will have them next episode. The four crewmen being back to discuss some games, but we're gonna jump into Antonio because a lot of you guys don't know who he is and what he does so antonio and can you, you should give, <laughs> can you give us a game of history and what you actually do long story short you know i was raised by wolves adopted into their pack they taught me everything i know how to fend for myself um i love games my my history with games goes way back just escaping into them you know what I mean? Like, I didn't like grade school. I didn't like high school. Give me a good RPG. You know what I'm talking about? So I um, discovered podcasts in about 10 years ago or so. And, you know, IGN, everything Greg Miller was doing with Beyond. And it kind of grew from there. Uh, met Corey, met a bunch of other people who were, you know, up and comers doing podcasts, creating content. This whole idea was still a little bit fresh. So I started it off. Uh, I've done p different podcasts and getting together with, with uh, like amazing friends, like making lots of connections with people. Um, I did the Platinum Achievement podcast, a uh, podcast called Switch Talk, and more recently been contributing writing game reviews at the Nintendo Village. Check it out, Nintendo Village. Uh, yes. Google, Google it. Lots of reviews and opinion pieces there uh, that I've been writing. And then just most recently joined the Mega Dads. So if you look on Twitter for Mega Dads Live, a uh, podcast about parenting and gaming, I am helping with their uh, opinion pieces and game reviews. So, like, I have bowed out recently from making a lot of content this last two years because my family had a lot of tragedy. I've shared it online and, and on Twitter about my own struggles with like mental illness and some things that had been going on that's been sidetracking me. But this year uh, seems to be focused on having fun, you know, playing games. I'm going to try to do your back backlog challenge, guys, because I need that push. Uh, but I love games. I love writing about them. I love talking about them. So, you know, what you guys do... I'm so glad it's just us three, honestly, for this show. Because, Ed, can I just say something? They don't let you talk, man. I, I was listening back to these <laughs> episodes. And Ed's talking. And everybody's like, yeah, but. And he's like, yeah, but. And then 20 minutes later, Ed's like, but that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> that's that's all I heard over the last couple episodes. And I'm like, but, let the man speak. But the thing about it is when I do speak, <laughs> I give a lot of information and a lot of opinions. <laughs> and everybody... Corey probably gets a lot of emails and text messages. Be like, Eddie is just wait, what? Like, 
But thank you, thank you, Ed Sardino. <laughs> I, I just really had to say it. it. I had to say it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to blow things up. I'm gonna blow things up. But thank you for having me on. That's like my little history, my little spiel. Uh, we have a baby coming, first kid in six weeks. So that's obviously gonna detract my get back at it plans. But you know, we'll see. Like doing my best over here, guys. To be fair, those first six months when that kid is either sleeping a lot or you know you just watching it lay there because, well, let's be honest, they don't move much. The first. <laughs> you know, few weeks, if you're not busy holding it and, you know, being in awe that you have a child, Switch is a great system. <laughs> oh, yeah. Switch is going to be key. Absolutely. Switch, Nintendo Switch has been a blessing to oh. the gaming community and to the industry. In no whole. doubt, man. Like, and we're going to get into the show stuff and, uh, and housekeeping, but I remember when some pe- so many people were making fun of the system, saying they won't have no games or anything. And just look at the indie sales, the physical sales, the system is self-selling, how N- Nintendo Lite has been doing. I mean, the Switch Lite, not Nintendo Lite. The Switch Lite has been doing. It's like really been filling a lot of people void who miss gaming. And stuff, or who can't game as much, you know, carrying a big sub, a big game like The Witcher Three on the go, or Master Hunter Generations and stuff like that, you know, even Bethesda games. It, uh, so many people have died back there to gaming because of the Switch, and it continues to go. Yeah, I'm a big believer in making sure that the barrier to entry of games is super low, and we could talk about it more later, but. Uh, I just got access today to Project X Cloud, and the Switch is going to continue to be obviously like key to me fitting in games when I can. I think with the maturing, you know, gamer fan base as we grow up, have kids, have lives, get into debt, have them mortgages. You know, oh. you're going to need to game when you can. And you're right, Switch is uh, Switch is going to be key to that for me. And I think Nintendo Lite is a good name. Good, good, good branding right there, Ed. Be Seriously, because the it's be light. Thing. It's light on features, so it's you know Nintendo Light. <laughs> Drop the Switch; it doesn't switch no more. You did it. I do. You did it. I do want to make a good point about the Switch, though. Like in terms of adding like a lot of third-party stuff, even though it's not the optimal way to play games like Doom or Wolfenstein or The Witcher or Overwatch, right? Like those experiences are there. And in terms of Wolfenstein and Doom specifically, I played those games after my daughter was born on the switch and uh i mean those don't get me wrong xbox one x version of doom looks a thousand times better but playing that on on switch was like really something i never thought that we would be able to do you know and like the witcher is on sale right now and i'm like going on vacation soon like it's on sale. I want to get back into The Witcher because I've been watching the Netflix show, just like, you know, 90% of the world. And I haven't like, watched it yet. Uh, but I know it's on Game Pass and I already own it, but like Switch the, Man. The Witcher is calling to me as well. I'm in that same boat as you. I have a list of like things to purchase, things to play, and, and Witcher Switch is on there. And I would have done it, I think, if, if Project X Cloud didn't hit, because now I could obviously, yeah. you know, stream and play Witcher, you know, in my but you, house. But you, but you know what? It's like, even with that, that that's still good because a lot of people will still support CD Project Red and the company who ported it by getting the Witcher 3 for a Switch. People laughed at it, it but then the day that it came out, you've seen 15,000 posts on social media that everybody was playing it or people were playing it and having a ball with it. So let me ask you a quick question. I don't want to, again, I keep blowing up the show. I'm sorry, but <laughs> like I would, I would spend about five, $600 right now for a handheld that played these AAA games at 1080p. I, I want to say 60 frames, but I'll take 1080p 30 frames per second, like quality, Witcher, doom all these things to me i will pay hundreds of dollars more you know i'll buy the switch pro or even if somebody else does it you know and what microsoft is doing project x cloud is a good kind of bridge there it's another solution Mm -hmm. of getting that um but i i crave something better like greg miller was just talking about playing uh witcher on switch and just saying like his eyes started to hurt so he was like you know what okay i'm getting back into it but i'm gonna go play it on the console i just he, he had that option but Man, I really craved that day, and it has to be coming. But I, I, I can't look at the 480p uh, screen for some of these games. It's, 
I want I want to love it, but it's just ah, it's just not enough. Yeah. Well, I, I I think when you when you look at it in, in that light, it's just like this is supposed to be played while you're on a go, while you're comm- while you yeah. while you have time right. to play and mm-hmm. not to do it. But even when you're like even like when to Antonio's point, like even when I was playing. Because I would play Doom and Wolfenstein sometimes in mm-hmm. docked mode just because I was already making progress and I had the TV, you know, at some point. But, like, when you're used to looking at some textures that are, like, 1080p or 1440p or even 4K, if you're lucky enough to have a 4K TV right now, like, you go back to that 720 resolution with some muddy textures and your eyes do kind of have a hard time adjusting to that. You um, got to squint. You got to yeah. squint. You got to hold that screen like like a foot, a foot away from your face. And, more and than we're you only talking, would. And yeah, we're talking about great. playing things it in handheld. Yeah. We're not talking about playing no, it on the TV. I know. This is more yeah. handheld. Yeah. Just yeah. in case of people were wondering. Most people, so. yeah, most people play handheld. Just had to say it. That's all. I, w- I want the Pro, Switch Pro, or yeah. anything. I'll, I'll, Sony, I'll buy your Vita that's Plus why, Plus or whatever the hell. Give that's me something. Why I skipped, that's, that's why I skipped upgrading my Switch, you know, uh, when the then extra battery life version came out, right? Because I'm mm-hmm. like... There's got to be a Switch Pro coming at some point. I need, I'm going to wait for that, you know. And Let's some, hope and pray. Let's yeah, hope and pray, everybody. Please. <laughs> and can it please just, ha- like, don't get me wrong, Joy-Cons are fine. But can we get a form factor option that looks like the Switch Lite, you know, that, like, it, it, it the controllers are attached, the D-pad's nice, but it just docks and it's nice and it's just a nice machine, <laughs> you know. Uh, preach. Uh, no, I don't want that. I'm sorry. I can't have that. He's just like, don't. down res it. Ed's like down res it some more. Ed's like give it a four point three aspect ratio. I-, I want mono audio. I only want to hear out of my <laughs> I left ear. All I need, all I need is to have Bluetooth functionality. If if they offer where you can't take the Joy Cons at off, at least offer a bundle <laughs> where a Pro controller comes with it. Welcome to the Nintendo know. Power Box episode 178. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. I blew it up. I'm sorry, guys. I, I started. I knew it. I, I said I would apologize. In the no, it's, that's okay. I mean, that's what this show is. It's just funny. <laughs> Pretty much, yes. <laughs> so, well, let's get into some housekeeping real quick. Um, this is the Boss Rush Podcast, Boss Rush Gays flagship podcast, where each week we talk about gays and what we love about them. You can find the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and anywhere else you consume products. Two Tuesday mornings. Follow us on Twitter at boss underscore rush underscore games and on Facebook and Instagram at boss rush games. Join our Discord, Xbox console community, and our Destiny clan. Also, live shows have returned. Just like this one, everybody. Join us live on Mixer and Twitch at Boss Rush Games Live. All one word to chat with us live on air. You can also find all of our content on BossRushGames.com and on Boss Rush Games at our YouTube channel. So we're going hey, to jump. Ed, ju- Ed before, yes. before we get into this, before we get into what we've been playing, just one quick announcement. So last night when we were recording the Retro Game Show, we came to the conclusion that... Boss Rush, the Boss Rush podcast is going to hit episode 50 the same week that Nintendo Power Block hits episode 200. Mm-hmm. We're going to do, to celebrate our, 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 you know, our five year anniversary of doing content together, Ed, our 50th episode of Boss Rush podcast and our 200th episode of Nintendo Power Block, we're going to do five weeks of giveaways leading up to Uh, episode 50 and episode 200 yes so he's very excited yes so uh next week we'll have more announcements on that like how you enter and everything but it's coming you everybody has a chest to win something yeah what you will get yeah we can't tell you but who knows we shall it's gonna be exciting yes oh it's gonna be so awesome so, yeah. so let's get into our gaming get down. I'm actually going to start with you, Antonio. What games have you been getting down to? So I have a list here. I was trying to pull it up so I don't forget anything. What's going on with me getting ready for my first child coming is I'm doing a lot of painting, a lot of house repair. So I don't have a lot of time. So when I do have a few minutes, I'm making this list, editing this list of what I'd like to play, uh, things that I that are on my back- backlog. And I have been playing a few things. So I, the first thing that I booted up when I got access to Project X Cloud was Wreckfest. It's been on my radar 
you know, for quite a bit. And the feeling of Destruction Derby way back on the OG PlayStation and um, that I got was, it was just nostalgia just hitting me. Very well-made game. And I knew it was going to be coming uh, to Game Pass, you know, eventually probably. It's but up, It's on my this, list to buy. Yeah, it's through the Project X Cloud. Here are free games to try, you know, once you subscribe to the service. So it's been really good. I mean, even running on the, you know, in streaming, I got... Dis disconnected for like a split second like twice and i was like moving from room to room so it it's running really well um i want to play more of it and it's just fun it's great to have these games that come along that with racing in particular like i'm a big fan of like midnight club like some of the more arcadey racers need for speed underground 2 is my jam things like mario that. kart double dash double dash all right there we go so that's that's something that i played um i started jedi i think it's amazing i wish that i had more time to get into that uh age of empires definitive edition assassin's creed odyssey i previewed on Google Stadia way back before we knew it was going to what it was going to be. They gave you a free copy for being part of the trial and that's another game that I've been dipping back into now. Excellent cuz I know Corey's been late late to the game but also feeling like it's amazing. So Assassin's Creed Odyssey is great. Uh Divinity Who was who was talking about Divinity the other day on one of these these Ray. episodes? So Divinity is amazing. Like I am this close to getting it on Switch. I have it on PC. I uh, uh, if you listen, I uh, pre-ordered the physical copy from Limited Run. There we go. Yeah, Divinity Two is amazing. If you're a fan of RPGs, uh, definitely yes. try it. It it's just doing things uh, on another level, just like world building wise, very deep, challenging combat. And then the last stuff was uh, I tried GTA Online. Just coming back to it since it. GTA hit uh, Game Pass, and it's uh, it's kind of it's kind of rough, just like how I remember it. Um, haven't finished Luigi's Mansion, haven't finished uh, haven't finished uh, Fire Emblem, and Ukulele and the Impossible Layer is amazing. Yes! that's my list. So I, I'm so, dabbing in a lot of different pools. Ukulele. Me and Craig was just talking about yeah, this. We were yesterday. talking about this last night on the Retro Game Show too. Like we were uh, for those who are newly acquainted to the podcast, the retro game show will be returning to YouTube next week. Uh, but basically what it is, is Ed and I play through classic games and uh, are for, we're almost here's the goal is to, for Ed to play all these classic games that I have never <laughs> played. So I can see them without having the grumbles of classic games. No, yeah, <laughs> but, but we've been, to- We've been playing through Link to the Past, and uh, we just finished the last dungeon before Ganon, and it's very exciting. Uh, <laughs> uh, but Ukulele in the Impossible Lair, what I found out this week was that uh, uh, Platonic, I was like, what, maybe like two weeks ago, Ed, on Power Block, we were talking about how Ukulele really felt a lot like Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze yes. in a lot of ways. Yes. Platonic hired two level designers from uh retro to work on the level design for this game so yeah. i was like well that explains a lot because it feels an awful lot like that game and now i yeah. i i literally scream i'm like wait what <laughs> didn't even realize it at all like yeah. even when we were talking about for the game of the year like it's i think it's one game that it must be played it, it's one of those games that needs to be in everybody library yeah yeah uh, the Epic Game Store just recently gave it away with their Christmas free games uh, promotion. So I picked it up there and, you know, click the get button uh, for free. And I'm not a platforming person, typically. I, I got into Mario Maker 2. I like Donkey Kong Country. But again, if I'm going to play a game, typically platformers don't uh, do it for me um, r- normally. But this game... Something about the mix of the gameplay of the overworld and the gameplay of the actual platforming levels. Very two different takes on what's going on. And uh, again, not really into puzzles too much, but they were just fun enough and just challenging enough. Uh, A lot of hidden things to find. A lot of collecting of... uh, There's leafs uh, in the game instead of coins. 
so I I got into that. I got into let me find the hidden collectibles. Let me collect these things and unlock the tonics that alter the game, you know, visually or unlock moves. That's key. If you have tried Impossible Air and you didn't unlock the extra move sets, like the extra glide and things like that, really do that because um, what I try to tell people is you're, it's not going to click with you unless you get all your move sets together and you start flying through the levels with some some ease and really taking advantage of what's going on um, mechanically. So, but when you get going, that game flows so well and it's addicting on a few different levels for me. And a lot of people say, "Do I like the overworld gameplay more? Do I like the, you know, the in-game platforming levels like more? That the fact that the levels change and flip on their head and." You know, they they have the same level, but a spin on them where maybe things go cold or there's water now or things change radically. And it's just it's really good. I agree with you guys. It's it's a uh, in, in some ways still a hidden gem. So you should play it if you haven't. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, definitely one of my favorite games of last year. I need to, you know, get back to it. But I've been sinking my time into other games. But uh I'll get there. I, I, we'll get there. Uh, one, one last thing I have to say. Yes. I'd, I'd ask me what my game of the year is. Uh, what is your game of the year, Antonio? I, I was on the Apex train for a while because I think it was an incredibly polished shooter. Um, but my game of the year ended up being Disco Elysium. I only played it for a short time, but it is fantastic. And I think uh, when you think of game of the year, usually it's something that's stand out. Uh-huh. like elevates gaming in some way unexpected in some way really doing something no one else is doing and and that is disco elysium it takes game writing to a level that we have not seen before uh i think uh have you guys tried it i know that you were talking about it it came up I, in your discussion i'm waiting for it to hit console because i don't mm-hmm. do a lot of pc gaming yeah but i'm waiting for it to hit console uh because i i I heard great things. It's one of those games that just came out of nowhere. And I was watching Zero Punctuation and how uh, he uh, he was praising it and stuff and, you know, kind of criticizing it for some things. And I was just like, okay, this looks cool. Um, but I'll wait to see if it comes out for, like, Switch or PlayStation or Xbox. And I guess it did get announced for console, but I just completely missed it. I didn't see no one it's, really talk about it. It's not out yet. But. Yeah, it, it'll be coming, but definitely my game of the year. It was a late entry, and I haven't obviously finished it, but right away it drips and oozes this a style. It's so deep, so unexpected. The world is, again, everything's out of left field, um, yes. and I would highly recommend trying that. E- even when I've heard people recommend it, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And I actually got it um, for free. Um, they were giving out codes randomly at the end of the Game Awards. And it's yes. like, oh, retweet this. And, oh, what would you like? And then I'm like, oh, let me get Disco Elysium. I thought it was a scam. And they're like, here's a code. I'm like, oh, my God, this works. So, you know, a shout out to the Game Awards. But uh, give it a chance uh, if you like uh, great writing at all. Once you do play it, if you are a fan of the Mass Effect series, think of what they're really trying to do with deep storytelling and branching paths and choice making a a difference uh, and characters and um, that whole idea. If this small team ever got a hold of something like a Mass Effect, like blend what they could do with like a more action-oriented AAA, they can use their writing uh, to elevate some game. I don't know what's coming out of this studio next, but incredible just incredible try yeah, it out guys because there isn't no combat when you do level up you could put it in to like, ask more questions and uh, uh be more attractive and stuff like that i was looking at it I was just like oh that's a cool uh that's a cool mechanic and everything yeah, it, it's very heavily dialogue based and it's all dice rolls you actually i'm pretty sure you actually see some dice rolling sometimes but yeah based on your stats everything in your character build heavily influences what the game is on a moment-to-moment basis so it's really great just needed to mention that it deserves all the praise from everybody you're hearing yes um Corey, what games have you been getting down to um okay well there's been the uh the comfort games as you would say Uh, i've been playing a lot of halo and a lot of destiny and i've been getting back into gears multiplayer a little bit uh just because like you know jesse and i I think tonight are going to stream so the hopefully the rest of gears 5 at some point uh but 
I've been jumping back into that multiplayer. Man, I there's just something about Gears that just I don't I don't know, man. And like it feels so old and new at the same time. Uh, Gears Five does. I still think I still think that uh, the Division Two is a little bit better in terms of how they handle a cover based shooter now. Uh, I think the division feels better than gears, but there's just something about how invested I am in the gears universe at this point. And, uh, I've made some upgrades to the windows experience. I'll say on my, uh, setup here. And, uh, I'm really prepping for gears tactics because, uh, that game looks awesome and it doesn't seem like it's coming to Xbox at launch. So, mm. uh, but I've been, I've been delving to that. And uh, the the one thing I don't really care for in the multiplayer is that in Gears Four you could pick what game mode you wanted to play, and jumping into Gears Five it just it it's just like the quick play and you get thrown into random uh, stuff like you know I I would like to play dodgeball all the time but I can't so uh, but still feels good uh, but hopefully tonight on stream we'll be able to finish up that campaign finally uh, I was looking at my achievements and. Uh, <laughs> We're only we literally only have like three chapters left of the game <laughs> when we stop playing. So, uh, so I've been in, getting into that. But the one game I've really been getting into is Hellblade: Senua's Sacrifice, and mm-hmm. I finally am where where I stopped playing when my daughter was born. Uh, I'm finally back up to that place in the game, and uh, I just just from an artistic point that game is just amazing like i i love the way they mix real like video in with the gameplay like sometimes and uh just wearing headphones makes all the difference right i bought a a relatively nice pair of like surround simulated surround sound headphones and uh just hearing you know hearing the different voices surround you and work their way around your head and like really putting you in her headspace is kind of overwhelming at points. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just a really nice game. The one thing I do want to say about that game though, is like, I almost think that game would be better if it didn't have any combat in it or like, you know, the, those story sequences where, where, uh, you are fighting, like would just be like a cutscene almost. But, um, I just I just don't really care for the combat, which is weird from a Ninja Theory game where you know DMC was so great at the combat. And I know they're different games, but uh, I always felt like Ninja Theory always did combat well, especially in DMC and even Heavenly Sword to an extent. Uh, but I'm really I'm really loving Hellblade, and it it I went back to it because of the Series X announcement of Hellblade Two, and uh, man, I'm glad I did. It's just, it's just so good. Yeah, it's um, it's on my list for my background challenge, like to really dive in. It's, I feel like Hellblade is something that no one in the industry would ever do or touch. And this, I, I feel like it's not a game that's out for money. It's a game out to kind of actually teach you what a certain mental illness looks like in yeah. game form. And I feel and it like just, it, it just feels. Oh, go ahead, Corey. Oh, I. Sorry, I thought you were done. Uh, oh no, no, no! I just say it was. It delivers that message very, very well. I feel like it really creates that headspace for you and really kind of communicates it well to you without actually saying, "This is what she's going through." This is, you know, whatever. I just, I just think it's delivered very well. Yes. So, uh, and then the last game I want to mention is uh, I started uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Two again. Um, because i i for the backlog challenge i have all these smaller games to focus on on xbox so i'm like switch is where i'm going to dive deep into an rpg uh and that's that's a game i didn't finish after it came out and uh i'm glad i'm going back to it i like the characters it still throws me off like opening that opening scene when you find out rex is like very british (laughs) and uh (laughs) But still, it's it's fun. I, I like it. I think the combat... I still think the combat from the first game is a little bit better, but overall, you know, Xenoblade is a good time. So that's it for now. All right. This week. Yes. 
<laughs> yes. So the games that I've been getting down to on Switch, uh, 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 Spritefall, um, Sparklight, Sparklight, not Sparkfall, <laughs> Spritefall. <laughs> Almost. That was there. great. I was like, I gotta play that. I never heard of it. Uh, Sparklight, <laughs> which is like a top-down Zelda roguelike game. I'm having fun with that. Um, Immortal Planet is uh, an isometric kind of. Uh, Dark Soul genre, hard game genre, um, game. Hard game. Uh, enjoying that. <laughs> uh, I because you know everybody consider that consider stuff like that as a Souls game or a Souls genre, and it's just like, uh, I, I guess yes, <laughs> but it is what it is. Um, been playing Breath of the Wild on Switch, um, uh, because I never got a chance to beat it, and that game is still breathtaking. It's still amazing. Maybe probably, I think it's it became one of my game of all times. And still to today, every time I return to it, I feel like there's something that still needs to be explored, and I'm surprised at it. You know, just finding stuff that even after three years that that game has came out, there's still more to learn about it. Um, Corey was talking about that he was we watching a trailer and it just it hit me and it was just like there was so much I still want to know but I don't want Nintendo to talk about it until it's ready I'm like because this game this sequel could go anywhere and it's going to be bonkers on how they go about it so um, kind of been playing that and been uh, buying some games uh, up, up on Switch. Uh, downloaded the Nathan Drake collection on PlayStation 4 um, because I got to re-go through 3 uh, since that's the only uh, Uncharted game I haven't beaten yet. Uh, so I want to go through 3 and beat that for uh, the challenge and everything. Uh, for Xbox... Um, this is kind of my last game. Uh, for Xbox, I've been playing uh, Borderlands 3. Uh, it's okay. I don't think it needed the parade show that they made it to be. Um, you get guns and you shoot. And, <laughs> if and, you know, if you need to... You know, get stronger, you grind, get stronger, get some better guns, and then fight the boss and continue on with the story. I there's something about it, it's just it's just like I know I've done this before, but this just feels a bit archaic. Like this feels old and even though the cell shade it looks nice and it's a little bit faster, there's just something about it just like you know what? I can have more fun at Titanfall 2 than having fun in this game. And, and I just don't know... I, I don't know what is it about it that I'm just, it's not grabbing me. But it's just like, I, I paid, got you for Black Friday as a good deal. So I'm going to make my way through it. Uh, but pretty much, that's all I've been doing for my Xbox. I am planning for more games to play. Uh, cause I want to get through not only Uncharted Three, I want to get through Judgment on uh, PlayStation Four, uh, Hellblade and Witcher Three. I want to get through on Xbox, and then just run through a gamut of games on my Switch. Cause um, I see somebody playing Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Uh, I beat the first two parts on it on Wii U. I didn't get to beat the third part uh, because other games. Every time me and Corey talk about us not being in a certain game and playing it again it's because other games get in the way and that kind of happens to a lot of people like we jump around so much <laughs> and everything <laughs> I mean that's, I don't know why that's why I think 2020 is like I'm focused on this backlog right <laughs> because uh, so many games do get in the way yeah I mean just hearing you guys talk about what you're playing like there's so many games, period, and everybody's playing like something else. And you have your okay. Let me play the old games. Let me come back to the stuff that I probably shouldn't still be playing or replaying because I played it already. Like uh, so, so many things. It's just it's just crazy. Uh, Ed, are you a fan of Borderlands? Do you like that gameplay? I I, I do like it. Uh, cause I I I got one when I got my PlayStation Three, and I brought two when they announced it. Like I did the pre-order, went to my friend's house up in Wisconsin, uh, to go play with his, with his brother, and we did a three, 
a three co-op uh, adventure playing that game. And I, 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 with Borderlands 3, I said, like, it's a good game, but I think it's because it's so big, yet it's so empty still. Like, I just don't understand why there's not more character models or anything else really to do in that game. Like, I, I kind of wish they they changed up some things, but I'm not mad at it. It's just like I'm playing it and I'm just not zoned in. It's just like I play it for a good while and then just be like, okay, I made some progress. That's it. It it's the opposite of what Crackdown Three did for me. Um, I never played Crackdown One or Two, but I owned them uh, on my Xbox, and I can't wait to play those. But Crackdown Three, as much as people say it was average or it was okay. I literally was having a blast with it. Jumping around, sh- the way I was doing the shooting, breaking things down. Like, it's a big world, but but it's like, it's balance in a sense on what you could do with that game. And I was just having fun. Like, I was staying up every night after work playing that game, trying to beat it and, and stuff. And uh, I played it with a friend too, too, at some times. But when I was playing it by myself, I was really making a lot of progress in that game. And when I do Borderlands 3, I might feel like I'm, I should just play it for an hour or two and not play it for that hour or two and then put it down and go and do something else. The reason, so, I, the reason I was asking about that is because it seemed like a lot of people found Borderlands 3 to just be a little bit too much more of the same and not like break any molds so it's like okay more yeah. borderlands and at a certain point no matter how good you know your game is there's this fine line of do you refine do you break the mold like if you look at what breath of the wild did it's like okay this is a brand new take open world very physics based you know very like you know the climbing aspect we're changing the franchise or going a different direction with it and you see that every once in a while like when mario goes to mario galaxy or when you know halo reach like what is that going to be do you do give people more halo and it's just this decision that comes at in the life of every franchise where it's like what are you going to do next more the same or go crazy and and surprise people and uh, yeah I kind of feel like Borderlands needs the mixture of Titanfall 2 and uh, The Division. I mean, not The Division. Actually, Wildlands. Ghosts become Wildlands. And the only reason why I'm saying Wildlands is because I think Wildlands is a garbage game. Um, <laughs> I, I, like, I like that you have AIs that help you out, mm. in a sense. I like Titanfall 2. <clears throat> Uh, because it's such an open area that the way that you get rid of enemies is up to you. So you can wall run, you can slide, you can jump. The guns feel good, you know. You you really want to go in and think of which gun should I really take because they all feel so good. And it's just like with Borderlands, you just you just go in the area and you just hold the R trigger. You throw the uh, L button. Um, or a left trigger for your bombs and stuff. And it's just like, okay, this is the same fight I just did two hours or 20 minutes ago. And it's just like, change this up. Like, really offer me different gameplay mechanics. Because I was having I was having that same problem with Destiny when it first came out, that everything felt like a washing machine. It was just, rent, it was just wash, rinse, repeat. Do something different. When they added the melee combat in the first Destiny, it was so much fun. And I'm just like, why can I have more moments like this? And when so, Breath of the Wild 2 comes out, are you going to want more Breath of the Wild? Or are you going to want them to change things up? Because I think conventional wisdom is that they're going to use the map, the engine, and the general gameplay. Like, you're still going to climb. You're, this is how combat's going to be. Uh, you know, you'll be able to do a lot of the same things. Like, the engine is, you know, obviously huge. Like, the building blocks are there. Yeah. Are you going to want a radical departure? Or are you going to want more Breath of the Wild? I know I'm going to get more Breath of the Wild, but because the way that I study Nintendo and how they do games, they always ask something different to change. They focus on that research and development and that gameplay mechanics to see what can add and enhance this game. They don't just make a game that just feels similar, and the next game you play is still similar. They always change it up, so what I... What I could see in Breath of the Wild 2 is that I'm still going to get that Breath of the Wild experience, but knowing them, 
they got some hidden gems in their gameplay that they're not ready to talk about. And I know they're going to highlight that maybe at Ethe or Nintendo Direct that I could take part of because maybe we could actually get some crafty, but we may actually be able to craft dungeons and stuff and really put weapons in there that we crafted and send it out to another player. So here go uh-huh. a dungeon. If you come in my world, go ahead and try and do it. I Get a little this. Kojima with it. Yeah, you're crazy, yeah. man. Yeah. I have good answer, man. Good, good answer. I, Seriously, you're, you're crazy, bro. You're I think crazy. too. Uh, while we're talking about Breath of the Wild too, uh, <laughs> I still think there's going to be a. I still think Zelda is going to be a companion slash playable character oh. that's going to help you solve co-op. Yeah, well, not necessarily co-op, AI. but like. Yeah, more more AI than co-op. I mean, co-op, sure, but I'm like uh, AI stuff. Like you can swap between Link and Zelda, and you know maybe you control Zelda or you can play as either one, and you use both of them to solve puzzles. Like okay, maybe Link needs to go stand on this switch while Zelda goes and you know races through this tunnel to you know solve this puzzle or whatever, and you use both of them. And uh, I think that would really, you know keep the familiarity of what people like about breath of the wild while switching it up enough to kind of, you know, what you're talking about, Antonio treading that line, you know, cause that line is very thin, right. And, uh, uh, you know, borderlands isn't the only game that had that problem. You know, a lot of people saw that in gears, uh, gears four and, uh, you know, <clears throat> a lot of other games that have come out, you know, since then. So, uh, co-ops very hit or miss, yes. uh, you know, especially with a game that's that deep, because everybody walked away saying, oh, yeah, co-op, two, two, two playable characters, or maybe it's an AI, maybe it's a second actual human control player. But let me get you a little bit excited real quick. You ready for a little bit more dynamite? I'm I only excited. got I only have like two sticks left, okay? I'm going to throw one of them in there, okay? Imagine a Joel-Ellie situation where Ellie is AI, you know, but a little bit more involved, or a Nino Cooney where you have a playing field where the AI is a lot more active in battle think kratos and uh kratos jr what's his name i forget atreus. his name atreus i just imagine me boy I'm... yeah <laughs> imagine boy out there doing his arrow thing and like helping you hold down an enemy and like y- y- comboing and stuff if you can do that and really bring that combat up to the next level and do an, uh, a second companion character along those lines that that's where i'm excited for i I, I like the puzzles. I think we're going to see like um, temples, more traditional like yeah, areas instead of the smaller uh, puzzle shrines. But combat for me was a little, a little lacking. Not that I didn't like the you know the inventiveness of like simple. physics, but yeah, I, I wanted, I want, I always like combat. I like deep combat. So give me some, give me some, uh, give me some God of War vibes in in the combat and blow and me away see, a little bit. And this is the problem with the combat thing. Nintendo don't know how to make stylish action com- combat compared to what God of it War is. On there. Ed said something negative about Nintendo. <gasps> <laughs> oh, no, no, I, some platinum I, people on there. Poach somebody from Astral Chain's team or something. I don't know. Platinum, platinum wouldn't be a right fit for it. To action. And, and only reason why is because Hyrule Warriors. With tech, mm-hmm. uh, Tecmo Kobe, uh, Kobe Tecmo, um, the fast action and 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 that in that game, if that was in uh, Breath of the Wild 2, I'm all for it. If they have that speed, I'm all for it. You know Zelda what? will never be fast like that. I never. Shoot. You're crazy. You're but, crazy, man. I wish. I wish too. Don't worry. I wish too. But but to have like that Wind Waker, Frozen Time battle scene. If anyone has not played Wind Waker HD, I cannot spoil a. Uh, there's a f- super. It's uh, there's a fight that's engraved in that game. Would you get to half a part, the half part of uh, Wind Waker HD? And uh, you, I got to I got to Google this. I got to watch. You this have video. to play. You have to play it. To Can I watch it or do I have to play it? You have to play it. Oh no! Because. I- all right, all right. Plus, when you play, when you when <laughs> the you backlog play, grows. No, the backlog. When grows. trust me, when you play Wind Waker or Wind Waker HD, and you get to that fight, this this fight thing, 
you will understand this is a different style of Zelda that has never been done. And if they could do it more in Breath of the Wild, you would literally lose your mind. All right, I apologize. I, I just I keep throwing dynamite in the show. I keep we're on the rails, and I keep <laughs> throwing stuff the rails. That's my hey man. So. That's what the show is, man. We just, <laughs> we just do it. Just do it. You know. Uh, but man, Breath of the Wild too, man. That game, I can't wait. Did you see that? Yeah. Did you see that fan made uh, Studio Ghibli style animation? Somebody did I for didn't Breath get of the Wild. Chest. I didn't get a chest yet. I just oh, see on, the cover of it, but I need to. Watch it's on it. Nintendo Life. It's like their fourth or fifth story down. Uh, it's mm-hmm. probably farther down at this point, but like it was, dude. It's so good. It's so good. I'm like just <laughs> oh, it's so good. I just I just yeah. want to throw that out there. <laughs> well. We're going to get into our question corner. Uh, remember, you can contribute to the show by emailing us at bossrushgamespro at gmail.com or look for our threads on Twitter or Facebook. So our first uh, two questions actually come from Deshaun Malone. What is y'all's plan for Boss Rush Games this year? Are you going to add any talent? Are you going to get a finalized content list? Okay, so let's address this one. Uh, so... Our plan for Barstool Games this year is that, and we, we kind of talked about we may be bringing some uh, new shows uh, and some old shows. Um, we're still doing E3. Uh, we're doing uh, direct reactions, um, indie masterclass, which is our uh, Nindy showcase show. Um, we're planning to do that. Uh, Pod and play, where uh, we're planning to bring. It's just a little bit more content. We got standard definition and what we. Uh, one v one, uh, coming along and stuff. So, uh, hit them hard, which is where I play hard, uh, play games on a hard difficulty, streaming them and showing you guys my skill all on that. Uh, the our retro game show where, like Corey said, me and him play retro games and stuff. Uh, we're going to be trying to bring more content, but that's more video content. Uh, we're hoping to have more features, like do write reviews and giving opinion pieces. Uh, I, I every September, uh, I bring the beauty of video games uh, to, so beauty of video games uh, for this year is going to be a Bosch Rush Games, where it's three weeks of celebrating the greatness and the beauty of video games and having podcast episodes on it. So I'm going to be doing that, and we're just going to be having a lot of great content come this year. Uh, some will be seasonal, some will be year-round, uh, but uh, that's kind of our plans for the side. Corey, did you have anything to add or anything? No, I just, you know, we, we've, Ed and I in particular, you know, we haven't really gotten a chance to talk to Ray or Jesse or anything, but like the idea is like, you know, we, we want to have enough content to be consistent without overwhelming everybody. Right. Like that's the plan. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we're trying, I want to make sure that, you know, the boss rush podcast and Nintendo power block are consistent, which they are uh, standard definition, uh, is is you know we we have the show notes for the first four or five episodes that we're going to record we're going to try to record them in advance that way you know we can kind of you know kind of just schedule them and, and be okay with that and then uh 1v1 is our interview show which you know we'll be debuting uh next week or the week after so uh you know we have a lot of stuff there uh the youtube stuff is always kind of like kind of supplementary to our podcast and our live stuff. Uh, I really want to do more live stream stuff, uh, mm-hmm. reacting to the conferences or, you know, Nintendo directs or state of plays or inside Xbox, that kind of stuff. I want to get more into that kind of stuff. I want to make shorter YouTube style videos. You know, Ed and I kind of recorded some stuff last night and, uh, yeah, there's a lot on our plate right now. We have a lot of ideas that we want to do, which is why we're exploring the seasonal show uh, kind of format with Pot and Play and Hit 'em Hard and, and Indie Showcase. And like, uh, to be on, if he he asked if we were going to bring on more more talent, is that what he said? Yes. Uh, I would like to bring on at least maybe just like one more person, you know, at some point, just to. You know, I think five is a good round number. We brought Ray in to do podcasts with us, which which has been good. You know, and uh, 
you know, the idea is, you know, just to have a rotating cast of people on shows in case somebody can't make it, you know, like today it's, I mean, we have guests like Antonio, right? Like there's three of us here. I think three to four people on a show is a good number. And if we can have a rotating uh, kind of chairs in case somebody can't make it, I think that's the best way to do a, a, a have a have a group that's committed and stuff uh you know we want we want boss rush to be something special for everyone you know and and, yes uh you know we we have a lot of guests scheduled in the next you know i think the next six or seven weeks are booked with guests congratulations to antonio you're first uh uh but you know it's it's a it's a it's it's a work in progress and uh with schedules and everything, it's hard to do everything we want to do, especially because people have been asking a lot about if Arsenal X will make its grand return, similar to Nintendo Power Block. And uh, we are, it started as a joke, but now we're heavily considering it. Uh, But the the whole thing is just scheduling. And I want to make sure the shows that we have already in progress are consistent before we add another uh, wrench into the, to the fire so uh but you know the idea is to maybe add one more person later this year that will be committed to our vision uh of it you know we have a lot of friends that want to do stuff uh you know and if people want to guest or or contribute as like a i don't know freelancer is the wrong word but you know what i mean that kind of yes thing. scabs yeah bring in the scabs you're welcome to be one of those antonio I know you have Happy a lot going on in the uh, in the future, especially with baby and mega dads and your streaming stuff. But uh, you know, you're welcome to to join us at any any time. Uh, I th- if I could weigh in a little bit, I think you guys are really great on your branding. Your graphic work is fantastic, and the conversational flow of the episodes of you know Bosch the actual Bosch Rush past podcasts in particular uh, and everything you do I think is really good you, you can find people trying to do a free flowing conversation and have it be just a little too just not as natural so I think that's a strength and uh, I'm excited for what you guys are you know doing in 2020 it's just such a challenge I think what you guys have too with like so many arms you know what i mean like yeah it's hard to keep that consistent at that point like i have enough trouble doing like one thing on the regular so yeah you know good luck do whatever you can i think diversifying your crew and having a rotation is you know key to keeping that up so yeah yeah that's that's why like ed and i have talked about adding one more person because you know sometimes like I'm busy with my wife and stuff on the weekends or Jesse, you know, we all work on different, a rotating schedule. Like I'll work, I work during the day and Ed sometimes works at night and Jesse works overnight shifts a lot during the week and like scheduling stuff, except for that's why we record boss rush on Saturday in the middle of the day. Cause it's literally the only time we have to record the show when we're yeah. all together or have like, you know, three of the four of us are available. Right. And, and so, uh, but, you know, someone, Antonio, I always looked up to you because you're so, you have such a great personality and bring a great flavor to what, you know, what, you know, some of our friends have called the indie podcast space or the indie content creator space, you know, and like, that's why we wanted you to come on this show too. And, and uh, you know, that's why we invited Ray too. He has a great personality and like, I think what you said I appreciate a lot is like we're all friends right so we just have the conversation naturally because it's what we do anyway like we're that's exactly. it. we're talking about games anyway it's just it helps when people write in questions and and kind of give us topics to talk about but it's not not something we wouldn't have that conversation anyway I think that's what helps the show be what it is you know and uh, uh yeah, that's that's kind of the plan for Boss Rush. Like I said, I I kind of want the YouTube stuff to be a supplement a supplementary to the podcast because I think the con- the podcast stuff is the most consistent stuff we do and the the most enjoyable things that we do and uh you know, the live streaming stuff I really like to do too and uh Yeah, I don't know. I I enjoy it. I I do think uh adding 
a fifth person or just a rotating set of guests would be great too. So, but in terms of adding content, yeah, that's the idea right now is to make sure our stuff is consistent right now before we add any more, uh, which it's been pretty consistent so far this year. Of course, it's only been what 12 days, 11 days of the year, but yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get into a second question. Uh, with the news of Xbox Series X not getting any exclusives in the first year, does this make you rethink your purchase of the console? Um, me and Corey kind of talked about this. I, like For me, it, it doesn't make me rethink. I'm going to buy it when I can buy it. And I'm going to get the games that I want to get on it. Um, I'm a person who still buys a lot of games fiscally. So when I get it... Um, Regardless of what system that it is coming on, I I'm going to buy it fiscally. Uh, with Series X, I'm gonna buy the system and I'm gonna buy that game fiscally. Uh, just because they're not making a game exclusive for Series X doesn't stop from doesn't stop you from playing it. If you can't afford it, just like with some games and you got Game Pass, if they put the game on Game Pass and you still got Windows 10 or Xbox One, um, and you're able to play that game. Play it there. It's about the experience. It's about enjoying, uh, enjoying it. And yeah, Nintendo does it with their Zelda games. They did it with Twilight Princess. Uh, they did it with Breath of the Wild. You know, they didn't make Breath of the Wild exclusively for Switch. They still brought it out for uh, for those other systems. I mean, for uh, for Wii U. So you know. It's, it depends on what games but if it's like for their first party and stuff I think they're going to bring it out there and put it on Game Pass for anybody to play that exclusive mm-hmm. stuff really don't really mean anything I, and I want to I, I want to say not exclusive I want to just say first party games because um, once again if your stuff is thrown up on another platform I don't feel like it's exclusive uh, so if Halo Infinite shows up on Steam when it comes out then and more games keep showing up on Steam or Epic or whatever, then it's not really exclusive. It's just a first party title. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I mean, I agree with Ed. Like, I, I would like to have the Xbox Series X as soon as I possibly can. But the honestly, the fact that, like, Halo Infinite is coming to Xbox One X or Xbox One also, like, really makes me. Like, if I can't get the console right away, I, I, at least I won't be missing out on the what xbox has to offer right because we're so entrenched in the xbox ecosystem now with you know me and jesse and ray in particular with game pass and and uh you know ed i know you try to buy as many of the first party games as you can but like i think the fact that if if you can't get the console on day one uh you won't be missing out on the experiences and i'm look i'm okay with that i don't really buy into the crap that people are saying online like i i'll get the series x when i can because i like the xbox console so yes um what about you antonio i have one more stick of dynamite left and i think i'm gonna light that shit up real quick all right so let's light it all right Corey, can you place your hands over your eyes like this oh boy all right, Corey is demonstrating a Sony PlayStation fan's ability to see the value of Xbox. All right, that's it. Pictured. Pictured right there. Hands, like, show me nothing. All right, I don't want to see it. I'm going to be as obtuse as possible. All right, this this must be one of the most egregious, misleading headline clickbait situations I've seen in quite a while. Because the reality is is the new games coming from all these dope studios are going to be playable on Series X as well as Xbox One X, Xbox One S, and I believe you're going to be able to stream these using Project X Cloud to any phone, any tablet, and available on PC. So that's, that's the reality, right? The headline is no exclusives. And, you know, I'll disagree with that in, in the sense that Ed, you're saying that if a game is on Xbox and also playable on PC, uh, it's not exclusive, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah, I, I don't, because everybody, 
everybody said that exclusives is exclusive to one system or one platform. Right. And when it jumps to different platforms, it loses that exclusive. It loses that exclusive. So if mm-hmm. your main, if your, if people are saying that the, if people are saying that exclusives are supposed to belong to one thing, the moment that it goes to some, but something else, it doesn't lose that exclusive. Yeah, I and agree. So, I mean, and, yeah, when you're when you're going by the the term that we all yeah. knew traditionally, exclusive is one like only on Xbox, only on PC, only on PlayStation. Yeah. I agree. So when I when I call it when I call something first party, it's that it comes from that first party developer, and they could put it on any platform that they want to. You know, it could Bayonetta two is a good example. It's still an exclusive to Nintendo, even though it's on two platforms. Um, that is yeah. more of an exclusive because it's only on Nintendo's platform. If you look at, at that, some people were kind of saying that exclusive. Some some when sometimes when it comes to exclusive, it belongs to that one console. That's what a lot of people might think, but it's not. It just depends on who has it. So if I say that something is first party, that be, that game belongs to that first party, and they could put it on any kind of systems they want. If they want to put Horizon Zero Dawn on PC, it's still a first party game because Sony is doing that. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, so. the term exclusive, the way we all know it, it's only on this, only on that. Yeah. But what bothers me about the situation is having an exclusive or can't play it anywhere else. Um, when we got into this, is it on PC and is it on a console situation? So now we know that most likely we're going to have, uh, well, we've had Xbox and PC games. They're blurring the lines there. We have Game Pass console and game pass pc and we have a lot of cross play cross progression microsoft is blurring those lines and then i believe that in the future there will be again pc and exclusive playstation games you know again there but the anger and the vitriol or the the discounting of a title as as long as it was on pc i see a lot of sony fans saying because it's on pc there's no reason to get the xbox as if it totally eliminates the fact that it's anywhere on the system you know like giving no credit at all to the ecosystem where again i don't i don't agree with that at all for instance the playstation 4 will most likely again at least for the first year kind of what they're saying with xbox you're going to be able to play games on the ps4 the install base is crazy it doesn't make any sense to put up that wall unless sony's saying you know what People will pay. We want them to definitely get the new stuff. But I don't think that that's what's going to happen. This, you know, you talked a lot last episode, I think it was last episode, about backs, backwards compatibility and all this yeah. stuff, how important that is. And again, just like why I had Corey cover his eyes, there's value in this to have a game, a new game. Again, a lot of people aren't seeing it as new experiences that are going to be pushing these boundaries and all that. They're like, no, they're going to be all old because you, you can play it on the Xbox One uh, X. You know, I, I just don't agree with this. Mm-hmm. I see the Xbox ecosystem as giving people access to games for a rock bottom price with no barriers to entry. You are going to be able to play Xbox in 2020 with nothing but a controller, even a PlayStation controller, your phone that you already have, and the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscription that's going to have console games, PC games, you're going to be able to stream from your Xbox or from the cloud, all of that all in one. And it's going to cost pennies. And we have people here who are all like, sucks, PlayStation, like all the way. And I'm like, I agree. Like me being a big Sony, I mean, a big Xbox advocate, if I had the choice to start, I would, I might consider a PlayStation 5 before a, uh, Xbox Series X for this reason, but and, and, and the thing, I love well, Xbox. I think it, it's, I think it's valuable. What's the, the thing, decision they're making? The a thing good, with, <clears throat> the thing with PlayStation <clears throat> is that Sony's acting, well, not Sony, not Sony, I won't say that. Um, from certain people's viewpoints about backwards co- uh, co- compatibility or BC, Nintendo's been doing this for a long time. And it's it's nothing new. Sony had a chance to still do BC, but they, if you look at PS3 when they first came out, you was able to do that. 
And then they put an update where they stopped doing it. You know, and Sony was doing it with uh when you have PlayStation 2, you was able to play PlayStation 1 games and 2 games. It's still on with even with the snare. So with PlayStation 5 being BC, you know, it doesn't stop people from playing games on their platform. Uh, with Microsoft bring, bringing games to PC, you actually, for, and a lot of people don't know this, you actually have to input more money into a PC to actually get something that is a that's going to be a greater experience than console. You got to get a graphics card, a, a bigger processor. You got to invest a lot of good money in that. And definitely if you're doing, trying to go bigger with a bigger monitor, um, a controller, a keyboard. Like if you really are trying to pick a beast of a PC just to play Gear 6 or whatever, you have to invest a lot of money. People are people who do a lot of gaming on console. They invest in the console, whatever they offer, whatever that deal is. And if they want to still be on the budget, Game Pass is a great thing. If they still care about physical, get the physical copy. Uh, if you're doing your stuff digitally, first party, don't forget you can play it anywhere on PC and on Xbox. Mm-hmm. So they they're giving you viable options on the Microsoft ecosystem. So, but it's just I think people need to realize that if you're doing stuff on PC, you have to invest more money three times what you invest in a console, and a lot of people don't take take notice of that. Mm-hmm. So, do you do you think it's a positive thing or a negative thing that Xbox Series X won't have any titles that you can play just on Series X? I think it's for right now. It's a positive mm-hmm. because it's, especially I agree. That's what I'm trying. That's that's my only gripe. <clears throat> I reject the premise that we sh- you can hold on to the word exclusives in the traditional yeah. meaning of the word exclusives and say you see, I like mean, Xbox sucks. Like that's that is the that is the wrong way of thinking about it. If you're being objectively looking at what features the ecosystem is bringing you, plenty of games. Any way you want to play, low price, all up and down across the board. No barrier to the new 2020 games exists, or right. very low barriers. And and when when The Last of Us 2 is playable on PS5 and PS4, I better see similar headlines saying PS5 has n- no exclusives because you can play them all on PlayStation 4. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like It's just a misleading, clickbaity thing that we've Xbox, gotten into here. Xbox is, you know... Xbox is getting away from actually being the physical box and being more of a uh, yeah. all-encompassing kind of thing. Where okay, I have an Xbox One X, and the thing is too is like mm-hmm. with you know cross-platform play now kind of being this huge thing. Like I'm, I think that automatically creates a bigger player base for something as big as Halo Infinite or as big as they want it to be. Right where Xbox One players can play with Halo can play with series x players can play with uh you know uh pc players if you uh you know want to like there's there's going to be that thing where you know of course if you have mouse and keyboard you need to accommodate players to only mouse and keyboard or controller or choose who plays with who but like playing gears 5 with people i've played gears 5 with people who are playing on pc and i'm playing on xbox right and and that's cool and that's love basi- it. that's yeah. basically it's the future man we're all going to be playing and, together. And I think, like, in order to get... Okay, we're going to view Halo Infinite as the Xbox Series X title, right? Like, I think we all kind of see it that way, but... Yes. It's the same way Nintendo... Nintendo... Ed and I were just talking about this on Power Block the other day during our Nintendo segment. Like, the Switch launched with Breath of the Wild. It's a Wii U game. Breath of the Wild is a Wii U game. It didn't launch with any kind of major first-party exclusives. Its first major first-party exclusive was Splatoon 2, right? And that was—I thought it was Arms. <clears throat> was it's it Arms? To... Maybe it was Arms. I don't recall which one came <clears throat> out first, but you yeah. could count—you can count the exclusives on one hand. Yeah. I mean, I mean, its its two biggest titles are Wii, are still Wii U games to this day. Yeah. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Zelda Breath of the Wild are Wii U games. So, I mean, you could argue that all I want, all you want, but like for me. I think it just helps the player base grow, especially in something like Halo Infinite or even something you already own, like Destiny or 
or Fortnite or whatever you plan on playing, right? I just think mm-hmm. it's just such a good platform and a good message overall to say, hey, if you can't afford our new box in the first year or two, like, don't worry, you can still play the games on your old box. This box just makes, like, of course, the new box is going to make them look better and sharper and nicer and maybe have some sort of ray tracing or whatever kind of buzzwords they're going to throw around. But if you if you can't, that's okay. You can have this box. Or if you can't afford our box, sign up for our xCloud service. You pay 15 bucks a month, you get access to uh, Game Pass Ultimate, and you can stream the stuff to your phone from our uh, data centers and stuff like Xbox is just offering people way more choice. Uh, And like, it's, it's an overwhelming amount of choice if you start writing it down and try to explain to somebody, but like the choice is there. And I think that that is a good thing. Where Nintendo, where Nintendo has a different viewpoint on entertainment and value and how they connect value and entertainment for their business, um, which is good for Nintendo because it works very well. Microsoft, they have a viewpoint different from entertainment and value that because they opened it up so much, you could get a lot of entertainment and still is they could still be profitable with the value that's in it. And you know, and why not have more open choices? You know. W- why limit yourself to just one thing where there's various ways that technology is advancing? So you want to get to those technologies where they could play your product. I, I, w- I want to say this. The Xbox Series X will not outsell the PlayStation 5. I, and, I, and you know what? Microsoft and Nintendo don't care about that anymore. Ex- exactly. The X is going to be most likely from what we're hearing, the more powerful console. Mm-hmm. But the, the options are endless. You can upgrade because I'm a hardcore player. I need the Series X, the best of the best. They'll most likely come out with a Series S or similar half step at skew. Or you can stay with your Xbox One X or Xbox One S and not upgrade. Or you can own no hardware at all and say, I've never owned an Xbox. Let me get Game Pass Ultimate. I'm going to play on my phone with my PlayStation 4 controller and have access to a slew of games like the options are like everywhere and you can spend pennies to hundreds of dollars and it's all going to be up to you but the the thing of the idea that this is a bad thing boggles the mind like people don't understand the value that xbox is delivering yet they don't appreciate it yet they don't understand it yet it's true it's too outside the box i I don't think until you give it a fair shot once somebody Mm -hmm. gets game pass and you give it to them they start downloading everything they start playing not demos they start playing full games and saying i'm gonna play this for three hours and then put it down but that's okay i don't feel bad about how many games i've tried because of game pass exactly after party my my friend pedro untitled goose game like the outer worlds even like games that were like you know people had high praise for but like you know maybe it wouldn't have been for me or i didn't feel like spending the 20 bucks to get a yeah. game that i don't like you know like game Pass has enabled me to play so many games that i wouldn't have purchased otherwise there is an int- i'm sorry Oh uh, no! I was, it, it was you was about to bring Nintendo. I was about to say, don't forget, there was a point that everybody is hoping that Game Pass came to Switch, and that might be in the future because of how Microsoft and Nintendo have worked together. I don't think it's out of the question. I don't. I don't know like how how much of a percentage that's going to be, but like I don't think it's out of the question per se. I, but they're linked. They have to be have the plans the planning phase and like the vision is incredible because i'm sure they're laying the the groundwork for that but there was somebody somewhere working on a computer and came into a planning meeting at microsoft most likely a woman and was like look this game pass idea right we're gonna put all these titles for one low subscription price and we're going to throw in our first party. And guess what? It's going to increase playtime, uh, people spending more money on games, people discovering old franchises. And who knows? It might be hurting developers. I'm not sure. But there will be a lot of positive outcomes from our company standpoint. It was a genius idea. It's counterintuitive. Mm-hmm. There's no way in the world this should be like all at a loss. Like everything should be 
like fire and brimstone. Like you can't give away all your games for pennies, but they're doing it and they're running with it. And and gamers do not understand it. it. And Sony people are like this. You see a, a fan, you see a fanboy like Xbox sucks. It's they have it, no games. It's to make it clear. What? Game Pass is great for people who are who want to try a title out that came out years or months uh, ago, and now it's on that service. Well, I be- I believe that if you looked at the release time to Game Pass, mm-hmm. you're gonna find some games that are one month, two months old. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's happened it's, already. It's, I forget what they are, but it's, I mean, it's Shadow, the, like, Shadow of the Tomb Raider was there three months after launch. Uh, it, there was a right. title that was like, whoa. I mean, I. I'm sure if you looked at a chart or got the data, but it is, is some of these games are like as soon as that hype cycle dips, which unfortunately is two three months, it's on there. It's nuts. I right, the it's only like two or three weeks sometimes. The, the only thing that's not on Game Pass are the new releases for a third party. A lot of indies and Microsoft stuff. Right, but on then there. you have like Uplay Pass or EA Access or you know I, you know those types of services that mm-hmm. I'm sure will make their way to Xbox at some point. I'm not. I, I, honestly, I think I think that th- say what you will about EA, but I think thirty dollars a year for their catalog of games is pretty decent, especially because like you're gonna get Titanfall, whatever the next Titanfall is eventually. And you know, despite what you say about Anthem, before it came out, people were excited for it, and that's on yes. there now. And and you know those you don't get uh, you don't get the new sports franchises year of right. You always get the. It's, I uh, think year it's, back. I think all games on the service are seven months after release. If they ended up doing like the latest like sports like Madden day and date, mm-hmm. you know like NHL date and date, then uh, and the Game Pass is is pushing everyone to whatever future online subscription streaming option you're gonna do, it mm-hmm. better be able to compete because I don't think people see it coming yet. Xbox hey. is gonna have a killer year. Period. I'm just I'm just glad that people hopefully they would try Yakuza out because Yakuza has been exclusive to PlayStation and yeah. it's still. A, it, not a low class game. It's still a niche game to the market, and it should it should do well. I I, I believe it should do well on Game Pass. Is it's coming to Game Pass or is it yeah. purchase? It's Game Pass. Game Wait, Pass. Yakuza, is? Hot damn. Yeah, Yakuza, uh, Yakuza zero, zero one Kwami and two Kwami. Yeah. yeah I'm coming. ready. I almost bought it for five bucks right now on Steam. I'm that's that big. I like the only time that Yakuza has ever came out or anything else has been Wii U in Japan, and I think it came out on PC. It's that's the only time that that series has came out. It's been stuck on Sony's brand uh, for years. When, so, when they announced Final Fantasy franchise coming, I peed myself. Mm-hmm. I let out a little bit of urine. I was oh, like, "Whoa!" I'm I was, I was very kid. excited. I, I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna move on. Yeah. Uh, so uh, with- before we get to the next question. Uh, huh? We've been recording for about an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, I've got about 10 minutes left bef- at most. So let's, sorry, I didn't want to be that guy, but okay. I have to be that guy. <laughs> okay. So uh, Samantha Cross says, hey guys, I haven't been in for a while, but it's a new year and new excitement for games. What is your one most anticipated game for this year? Um, for me, uh, my one anticipated game definitely is Ori in the Will of the Wisp. I think mine is. I think mine's Halo Infinite. Uh, until Nintendo announces something really crazy, like I exactly. You know, that's why. That's why I gotta go with Ori. Maybe we'll revisit this question after the first Nintendo Direct. <laughs> right, exactly. It's audio. Final Fantasy VII remake. I love the game, and the the remake looks amazing. Okay, at WT Famicom, love. Uh, when is the world currency going to become bison dollars? Um, it's when, not. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn happens in real life. Right? No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Glad I left uh, my own joke. It's all right. Uh, Antonio? According to the International Monetary Fund, probably 2046. Okay. And our last question comes from Sam Hall. What is one game you want to see in a different genre? What's the catch? Okay, so I'm glad he asked this question because I saw someone post on Twitter the other day. Super Metroid Tactics. I saw it. And it looked looked like a... 
It was like a pixel art, yeah, like, kind of like rendering the, of a looked, screen. It looked kind of like Into the Breach, <laughs> and I was like, uh, I didn't know I wanted this until now. Although Ed and I had a lengthy discussion on how uh, Super Metroid Hell Divers. Yeah, we were talking about Metroid Hell Divers at one point, <laughs> uh, and and I'm sticking with that. I wrote up on the Nintendo Village a article that should be posting uh, very soon called Pokemon Tactics invasion of kanto and it's basically a, a article series that i'm writing about pokemon merging with n- uh, different genres they tried this in 2012 but like a final fantasy tactic style with pokemon so conquest. you have like your little armor yeah conquest so i an expansion and a reimagining of that with everything that's been learned in the last 10 years um you know, the best parts of the modern Fire Emblem and the modern XCOM and the modern, all these things, uh, but built into a beautiful Pokemon tactics game. I, it's a whole long article about here's what I want it to be and here's what's going to happen or whatever. It'd be okay. Dope. So, uh, and well, Helldivers would have been one. Um, my actual answer, and Corey, you're going to probably be mad at me about oh, this um, Destiny in the form of Act Racer when it came out for Super Nintendo. What's so you Act got. Racer? You don't know about Act Razor? Act Rate? No, let me Google. <laughs> Act Razor that... is a 2D platform slash sim game. Yeah, it's, so, it's like a you're like this god and you go through the side scrolling sections to like. You go through these side scrolling sections. And what was it on? Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. It's I, on, no I think it's on. I think it's on the Nintendo Switch Online thing. Is no, it? No, it's not. No, it's not. Okay, no. never mind. It's not there. Oh my so, god, it exists. Yeah. So there's Act actually Razor. two of them. The second one sucks. The first one. Then yeah. didn't somebody just try to remake or do a love letter to Act Razor? So Seister took the from Se- that Sega did. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. What it was. Um, uh, so the two D part would be a regular Destiny, and then when you get to the sim part, you could build up uh whatever that place is that you tower. always visit. Yeah, you get to build up the tower. Like that. <laughs> this game looks bunk. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Are you serious? How do it you looks, not know Act about Razor? Act Razor? It looks like <laughs> it looks like a Super Ghouls and Ghosts, or you will be shocked. Okay, so just the way that it looks, you might think like, okay, it's kind of janky. It has one of the best soundtracks. Oh, okay, um, I'll listen. To um, this. If this is where Enix. Before they became Square Enix, this is one of their gay. I think it's Enix. This is one of their gays that they were mixing two genres at the same time. Yeah. Um, and it was a big gay. Yeah, it's one of those. It's one of those games that's like. I never man, heard of it. I can't believe you've never heard of Act. <laughs> you Razor. never heard? Ne- never. Act, Act Razor is one of the biggest gays that people talk about yeah. when, when they, you talk, when about, they talk about, about like must, when they talk about must plays on Super Nintendo. Act Razor is always in that conversation. Yes. Man, that, that was that might have been the biggest surprise of the show. <laughs> that exactly. Nintendo has never heard of Act Racer. Oh my god, it's on Wii U. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I uh, literally I'm sorry that I had to scream at everybody. That just shocked like my soul is still out of my body trying to look is looking at it and you're like, you don't know about Act Racer. We're gonna have got, a discussion. It's got mixed reviews. That's what I'm reading. I I would it's not really changing genres but it's opening up the genre i've been thinking a lot about a, a a gears of war division style game where like it's set in the gears of war universe but you're going around a city like doing tasks and finding up weapon upgrades and stuff like i've been thinking about that a lot especially with like i don't know if you watch the trailer for gears tactics but the way you can add stuff to your weapons and change out Stuff to where like certain things are more effective on on certain weapons. I'm like, yeah, I really want that. He wants to replace the memory of Gears Pop. Oh gosh! No. <laughs> I said, I said, I, I hear good remember, things about Gears Pop. Remember when we watched that live last year? <laughs> and I was like, or maybe it was like two years ago. And they showed the Gears logo on this brick wall, and it was like, I was like, yeah. And then the pop figure just busts through the wall. I'm like. No, <laughs> Corey, just like, what is this garbage? Oh, I was so upset. <laughs> oh, I I just want to fall out and laugh because it came out of nowhere. Yeah, that's on the that's on our Arsenal X YouTube page. Uh, All right, Act Razor Two looks cool. That's all I gotta say. I can't. 
<laughs> wow, so uh, it's, no. is two the bad one? Yeah, two's the bad one. Oh, dude, it looks way better than one. Oh, this is dope. Yeah, because two is all plat is all platformer <laughs> stages, but it's way harder than one. Oh man, that's awesome. Yes, <sighs> but everybody, that has been Wash Brush Games. Uh, want to thank you guys for tuning in and watching us live. Antonio, thank you for joining us this episode. Do you want to plug it? Anything? Go right ahead. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Hypecaster, at Hypecaster, and I'll be uh, talking all sorts of trash on there. Thank you. How did you how did you acquire Hypecaster? Because that seems like something that somebody like in the esports world would have already had. How did you how did you just <sighs> I hate I hate it when somebody gets the Twitter name that they want and it's just perfect. And I, don't, I, I, I can't get I, there. Hype is the epitome of gaming. What talking about it, anticipating it, hoping for what's to come is gaming. So that's where the hype comes from. And then I forget where Caster came from, but it, it's all about the hype. OK, embrace the hype. Live in the hype. It's the best part. It doesn't get any better than this. All right. It's true. That's fair. That's, that's very fair. true. Corey, do you want to plug anything? Uh, I guess you can follow me at. Corey and HG seven one three on Twitter and Corey and HG on Instagram and Mixer. Um, I'm going to be having a top five uh, games you should download on Game Pass right now coming out this week, as well as uh, hopefully my Hellblade review debuting this week as well uh, if I yes. finish the game. So uh, that's 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 what I'm going to plug right now. Also, Nintendo Power Block podcast yes. Saturday mornings <laughs> seven a.m podcast service choice and youtube live on twitch and mixer okay you can go now ed (laughs) (laughs) i can't with you you guys can find me on twitter at that retro you can check out um my podcast optional opinion on soundcloud itunes google play and other podcast apps i will just release a new episode can games trick or something in you where i'll uh, cover about games make you frustrated they make you laugh or they really make you fearful and other things so do give that uh episode a look out you can find me on Twitch and on Twitter at uh, me, Twitch and Mixer at the Lyrical One. Um, I do have an Instagram, but I got to get back into using it um, because I haven't just used it in a while and stuff like that. But with that, everybody, have a great week. Have a great weekend. And we will see you next time on Bosch Rush Podcast. And as always, let's all play games and be better. Bye, everybody.